Hi, my name's Mo, I'm from the Lynx. Uh, I'm one, one of the network engineers. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with the root servers since uh, 2002, so uh, I've come being voluntold to do this presentation today. Uh, I'll start with uh, well, the contents of my presentation, uh, cover the history of the root servers at Lynx, uh, the, uh, the plan and the criteria we've, we've decided on for starting prefix validation, the challenges we faced uh, when starting this project, um, how we collected the data, I'll, I'll show you some of the test results we've, we've, we've got so far, and uh, look at the progress we've made, and uh, show you what's happening next uh, after mainly this presentation, really. <coughs> so, uh, look at the history of the uh, Root Servers Links. Uh, we, we initially had four root servers uh, in 2002, uh, two for each of the peering lands in London. Uh, this was obviously for redundancy. They both uh, ran, ran Quagga, and uh, we only filtered on Bogons and Martians. It was uh, decided that will, the root servers will be completely transparent. Uh, for, for routing policy, members just tagged uh, their prefixes with a community model that we defined. To, uh, it was up to them whether they wanted to uh, announce their prefixes to everyone or or to a certain AS, or not at all. <coughs> Around about 2009, 2010, uh, was a quite unhappy, unstable time for the root servers. There was a, a what I believe was a scaling issue, and uh, and just it, it basically was just a really terrible, a really, really terrible time. So, around about 2010, we migrated to Bird and uh, a UIX. Uh, forked version of, of Quagga. Uh, today we still use that, that uh, we still use Bird, and we still use that uh, UIX funded forked version of Quagga. <coughs> we have now 10 root servers. These are deployed around IX Manchester, IX Cardiff, IX Scotland, and Links Nova. <coughs> uh, sites that have, uh, of our peering lands that have multiple sites, so there's usually around about two root servers on each peering land. One would be Bird, one would be Quagga as well. Again, okay, this is for redundancy. Uh, each each root server runs a separate a separate instance of V4 and V V6, and uh, excuse me, yeah, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Sorry. Uh, so around about this, around about 2016, 2017, uh, we we started getting some feedback after some incidences we had with the root servers, where uh, we had some prefixes that were hijacked, and. Uh, we decided to, that perhaps now was the time to do something about it. So going on to the stats for the root servers, uh, you can see uh, at the moment, the, 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 two, the, line, the red line at the top are our London root servers. And they're the most populated with, with prefixes. Uh, so we basically have chosen that as our, as our model to test against. Uh, I think the big, the big kind of blue Block you see at the bottom there on the on the bottom left is uh, where Hurricane Electric decided to appear of our links to the root server. <coughs> so once we decided to enter this project, uh, we we set up a set, set aside a plan, a, a four a four step plan. It will be a phase a phase rollout. Uh, the initial s steps will be the internal testing, which which we are currently in now. We also do the system changes for any tracking any member settings that are are kind of different from the norm, the norm, our normal peering configuration. Uh, well we're about to now enter the phase one of taking the prefixes with, with a defined community. Uh, phase two will be an optional uh, for members to decide whether they actually want to filter the, uh, the, their prefixes. The criteria we set is basically uh, for, for, prefix to, pre for prefixes to be validated, and, f and for the origin ASNs to be validated, they have to be in, in IRDB entries. So the defined community model for tagging the prefixes is, is, is shown here. Uh, it's similar to what other IXPs are using. Uh, so once, once, we start, once we deploy the phase one, the prefixes will be uh, tagged with uh, uh, either two of the top four communities. When we, once, we, once we started this work, we were faced with a number of challenges. First one was, could, could we use a tool that was, that was readily available? We looked at a root server and IXP manager. 
A route server was quite was, was quite promising. Unfortunately, it only did uh, a configuration for a single rib root server. Uh, our root servers, or the bird root servers, are links are multiple rib. So that that was that was put aside for the time being. Uh, IXP Manager seemed quite well, but if we did use it. We'd only be using a certain sort of part of it. So we looked at BGP, BGP Q3, which was I think believe I think it's used by both a root server and IXP Manager, and that seemed promising for us to use. Uh, it, it's quite good for us because you can you can flag it to output in in bird format for the prefixes for the prefix filters, and we we just liked it and it just seemed very good for for being part of our scripts. Uh, one of the things we didn't have was we didn't have the the names of all the ASS for all the p members that were appeared with the root servers, so we had to set a, a figure out how to collect these. Once we had these these hosts, we then had to validate the ASSets. And uh, one, of, one, of, one of the challenges was actually keeping all this data that we have uh, the same as our live, our live environment. So every morning now, we, we basically take a, a BGP dump of uh, our root table and pump that into Exit BGP, and we have, a, we have what's basically running on the same day for, for any testing. One of the things the root servers are, are, at links aren't part of is any kind of automation. But for the Quagga root service, we still copy and paste our config via the CLI. And for the bird root service, it's basically just a, a flat file with a list of um, IP addresses, AS, AS numbers, and MP5 parcels if used. And we just run a script that collects that data and creates the config and runs it. One of the things we didn't, we didn't really, we weren't up to date with what were other IXPs doing with the root service in terms of filtering. So we had, we had to kindly ask them and engage them. And uh, one of the things with, with the bird stuff was the scripts were written in Perl at the time from way back. So we had to now migrate these to Python and Jinja 2 templates. Uh, so once we started, uh, once we collected all the asset names, we, we used this uh, and query, sorry. Once we, once, once we had all, these, all the info we needed, we used pairing DBs as a source to uh, collect, collect all the ASAT names, uh, just using a simple uh, Python script. Not all member, not not all the members were were, regi were registered. Not all members have been who were registered on pairing DB, so we had to we had to. Uh, that was a, quite a challenge for us. Uh, any members that were registered either had the correct name in the in the IR field, or didn't have, or had the incorrect name. There's a few examples. We, we came we came across. Uh, apologies for naming and showing any members up there. Which is just using it as an example. So this, when, I, when I did an actual count of this, there was about 200 members of the 500 on RS1 and, and in London that had the incorrect info at the time. <coughs> so, so, so to collect this data, we we, we asked our NOC to open some 200 support tickets to the members. These. Uh, they asked these members either to correct their pairing DB details or, or to open a profile if they didn't have one. Then we then, the NOC then validated this info. For members that didn't respond to us, we, we just trawled through RADB, IR Explorer, and pgp.he.net to find the correct info. In some, time, some cases, we actually Googled it. Once we had all the ASAC names, we, uh, we used PGP Q3. Uh, Queried Rad, the RADB servers and collected all the all the filters we needed, and stored these in a on a text file and JSON files. For unknown uh, AS sets, we just queried the members AS. At present, our data is only collected once a day, and it takes about 10 to 12 minutes to, to collect uh, data for 622 ASs. <coughs> it's a small diagram of what we currently how we're collecting the data. So we have this flat file in the middle that just has. A list of ASs, the ASAT names, whether this data is available on the peering DB or not. Uh, we have a separate Python script that runs runs off the peering DB and collects these ASAT names and ASAT names and and feeds it back into this flat file. Uh, we can also e e enter this information manually if ne needed be. Uh, once this information is in there, a daily Python script will go off and collect the data uh, from RADB and and create other text files or JSON files for any of the prefix filters we need. Uh, 
So the progress we've made so far is that we've uh, we've written a lot of scripts to analyse the B2B tables. Uh, we now collect all the all the all the R data for any for all current uh, routes of appears and any new ones. Uh, we're still in the process of process of speaking to members who who haven't responded to us and and uh, asking them basically to uh, give us the, the the information we need if they want if they don't want their prefixes to be marked as invalid. Uh, we we use our knock as well to uh, communicate with members. In, on the other side of the world, this is quite beneficial for us because there was a lot of work involved, and uh, I think we wouldn't be where we are today without, without Knock giving a helping hand. Really, uh, link, uh, in June this year, we hosted a Route Server workshop with the UIX, and uh, a lot of the European IXPs uh, turned up, uh, including some some guys from uh, JPNAP. We 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 exchanged uh, some ideas, and that gave us some assurance that we were actually going on the right path of doing things. Our initial testing when we first started for RS1 in London was uh, that we initially saw 40,000 prefixes out of 116,000 uh, failing, uh, sorry, passing. And at the time, they to us, this didn't look very good. Uh, one of the things we did notice about the more specifics of valid prefixes were also being tagged as invalid. So this has kind of left us in a, a kind of a grey area whether we whether to to perhaps mark these as valid or Maybe, and also maybe assign them a community just to, to, to show that they are part of a, a part of a valid pre, uh, prefix. We still have 100 members to contact who who have no inf in uh, have, have no what incorrect info in peering DB. Um, which is just a small diagram of how we uh, currently today create what well, will be creating our bird configuration with all the prefix lists. Um, it's a four-step process. For, for Using a configuration builder, um, using Ginger Two templates, uh, the the the, yeah, the main config, the the mama, sorry, I can't read that. The main config of the Bogons Martians are created using Ginger templates. The pre the the IR the DB stuff isn't, so it's it side sides it kind of sides sides off, and then all the RS client peer configuration is also done by Ginger template input. So here are some of our test results. It's, it's, uh, this was taken just around about Lynx 98. Uh, we've not had much response from members on this. So we, we, we kind of think we know we're, from the previous test we did, we're heading in the right direction with all the d data we're collecting and asking the members to, to correct their, their, their ASX in peering DB. And this is uh, um, some results we got from last week for both the, both the Quag and Bird platforms. We, uh, we can see, obviously, we can see um, quite a big difference, difference there. Uh, we also noticed that an increase in the more specifics of, of valid prefixes that have been marked as invalid. We think this is probably due to the fact that we've, we're now, even though we're getting uh, members to give us the right data, uh, this is probably a, the, the effect of it. Uh, what's happening now is, is that we'll plan to migrate the IX Manchester root servers first as part of the phase one. So we'll ta this will be tagging, tagging the prefixes. This will happen around, around about the end of September, maybe early October now. Uh, yesterday we, we did test what would happen at IX Manchester uh, on both platforms. And these are the test results. They're kind of more equal than what, what they are on the previous test results for RS191. So we're hoping, uh, we're hoping to improve on this still. Uh, we have found some a few minor issues in config and a few bugs, so we are working on it. Once this is once this has been completed, we'll then decide to support to other root servers. We'll do the regional uh, lands first, and then move on to the London lands at the end. Uh, once this has been completed, then we'll decide whether to move on to phase two. Uh, we'll also work on improving the automation to our current system. And we'll continue to contact members to ask, to ask them to use peering DB and have the correct info. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mike. Are there any questions from the floor? Uh, yeah, there's one right at the back. Hello, um, Tom from, well, with my IX Leads and 
and Lonap hats on today. So we had an interesting uh, problem that got round our filtering. Um, so we had, a, we had a member who, who had a root, so you've got to get your pronunciation right for this one as well, a root server instance that they were announcing to our route server. Um, <laughs> uh, and we, we should have filtered that. And I was wondering why we didn't filter that, but the customer had helpfully put VeriSign's AS in their AS set. So yeah, this is, maybe it shouldn't be so easy for us to, as a community to put other people's ASs into our AS sets. It's, it's, it's an observation, not a question. Thank you. A question from me, actually. Um, regarding the, the data that you were getting from PeeringDB, um, in terms of what the correct AS set should be and, and the issues you have with that, I take it there is therefore no sanity checking of what people are putting in that field in PeeringDB and they could say, one and two half badges, please. I honestly don't know uh, what, yeah. what peering DB do. Right. Uh, perhaps I should have asked them, but because uh, uh, obviously, if, there, if the IXs are going to now start use, or, or indeed ourselves, if we're going to start using more of that data, uh, I think yeah, the, the, the age-old guy go thing applies then, and, and you, you, know, you need to be sanity checking it so people can not put rubbish into it if people are going to start using it. Um, and then I, I like the graceful approach that we're going to validate things and tag them if they're valid so we can then make policy on our own routers when we peer with root servers and say, yeah, we only want to accept validated routes and throw the others away or, or treat them more in a more circumspect way. Um, and and the, the phase two is what cranking up the level of enforcement, basically. Sure. Yeah. I mean, one of the things we have seen as well, I've seen a few, a few with a few peers, is that they do have AS sets listed in peering DB, but when you actually go and query them, they're actually empty. So any prefixes that they're going to announce will be marked as invalid. There's a terrifying amount of sanity checking. Will, did you have a question, or, or is the question it, from it, the room? It was more, I just wanted to, as Will Hargrave from Lonap, um, comment on, on your point about um, checking what AS sets are. If I'm... Uh, say I'm widget LTD and I'm operating my AS, so I put AS widget in the right database, but I can put any AS in that anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you sanity check that AS set in the data source because it could be subsequently changed anyway, or how do you know it's even valid? And of course this is, I think the key thing is here is it's like a, a step towards better routing security and that's it's a good way forward, but it's, there's always going to be corner cases where, um, or quite big corner cases in this case where it's not fully secure. Are you going, you're going to Thomas. Okay, Thomas and then James and yeah, we've got time, that's good. Uh, thank you, Will. I, I do agree, but what it means uh, is you can, you can then clearly differentiate between accidental and non-accidental fault and that would be a big difference already. I'm the mic runner. Now. Is this actually a question or is it a, is it, is it a comment? It yeah. is actually, actually a question. Um, already, Lynx publishes the number of routes seen at each of the root servers. Are you going to publish in the same nice graph how many of them are invalid? I, I do believe we're going to publish those at, at some point. Uh, you could even ask them to us directly if you want to, but I believe we're opening up a looking glass to be able to do that. Once, once we start the deployment of prefix validation. Excellent. So basically, we're a pit of shame that's queried by, queryable by an API. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions for Mo before we move on? And if there aren't, I'd like to just to thank Mo in the traditional way. Okay. Sure.